Welcome back to our very last double feature lecture here um, as part of Living the City. Living the City is an exhibition, it's a publication, it's a program of events and it's mainly a discursive platform on cities, people and stories. Um, today we have Berlin-based cultural manager, publisher and author and many, many more things. Adetun Küppers Adebisi, thank you for being here. We have architect Benedikt Stoll. Um, of Guerrilla Architects with us, an, an architecture collective based in Berlin. Um, this is the last session. Usually there is something like a common denominator in the talks, which happens randomly because you're not picked by the overlaps, but it's, it happens by coincidence, whoever has time on that, uh, in that slot now. But I think the kind of critical questioning of preconceived storylines within the public discourse, also of the European city, might be a common denominator, a red thread in both of your talks. Um, in any case, thank you for, for being here. Um, Adetun, I will start by um, introducing you. The, the setup I explained to you and to the audience uh, knows it by now. You both will present for roughly 10 minutes and I ask a few questions and we engage in a conversation together and after 60 minutes max, we're done. So that's the setup. Um, uh, Adetun, you, um, we, so I, I try to start how we came across one another. We meet for the very first time in person. Um, um, I reached out to Decolonize Berlin a couple of weeks ago um, uh, and uh, came across Decolonize Berlin actually via Mitchell Esayas of the Black Archives. That's actually right behind me, uh, one of the projects in the exhibition. So um, I'm very grateful and thankful that you kind of um, took up the invitation and are here with us today. You um, do many, many things. Your CV is very, very long and you can elaborate on that one, but I'll start a little bit. You are actually trained as an engineer of applied science and economics. Uh, you are the president of Afrotech TV, Cybernomets. That's a black German media, culture and education archive. You are the curator of the Black Berlin Biennial for Contemporary Art and uh, Decolonial Discourse. And in all of your work, um, it seems like uh, one of the focus is somehow knowledge transfer of in one way or, or another. And you do that also through different media um, as a curator for exhibitions, but also as a publisher, as an author, uh, as a teacher as well. And um, it all kind of deals with the impact of culture and media also as a main means of integration or actually disintegration. So um, that said, uh, the, the stage or the screen is yours, Adetun. Thank you very much. Yes, I am like Adetun Kripas Adebisi and I am a curator and um, the last curation was um, Mitte wird gehalten. It was like um, covering the um, front of the um, uh, Senate, no, of the um, um, Council of Berlin uh, and the Senate of Berlin was sponsoring it. So the Black Berlin Biennale is uh, basically, um, and all my work is also based on my, um, on my uh, diploma and my uh, research work uh, uh, at the university. I research nationalism and uh, waste management, uh, which is like um, a topic that I always, um, you know, put together in terms of what is the political knowledge behind it or what is the political focus behind it and what is the um, cultural focus behind it and also the social economical focus behind it will, is always intertwining. So I also go beyond that and say we also have a geographical focus when we talk about this uh, subject and altogether we um, have to uh, put this um, spiritual being of where the people are coming from and then we deal with this uh, knowledge or, or this um, um, notion of uh, marginalization and what is the uh, no, uh, northern and the southern aspect of how we view knowledge and how we view uh, uh, culture and which culture is a high cultural uh, uh, perspective uh, uh, denomination. So that's um, also uh, uh, the part of what and who is publishing from which perspective is very, very important. So that's why also everything we publish uh, is always looking at this format of 
who is uh, discussing a topic about uh, what in which geographical uh, stating and um, the, the knowledge of um, um, which passport bearer are you it has to be always it be in consideration and um, um, being uh, the, the, the southern uh, person in this narrative uh, is also like, um, is it like, am I acknowledging a marginalization that is coming from the outside, of course, but the marginalization um, is nothing that I have to accept because I have like a lot of expertise that I can just put out and I am um, basically privileged to also be able to do that in, in this national setting in uh, Berlin. So doing uh, all this aspect, always concentrate a lot of, of Berlin and uh, a lot of being doing something like Black Media Congress in Berlin, which was something that was also um, budget by the Bundeszentrale für Politische Bildung, which is like um, the combination of the governmental uh, approach on uh, culture and um, this intersectionality um, merging and the diversity format in it brings a lot of wonderful, most spectacular format like uh, we can also see in your work today, we're sitting inside. So the Black Berlin Biennale is something we do every two, two years. Um, and the center of our work is uh, Kunsthaus Kuhle, where we live with 20 artists and, um, you know, live and work with 20 artists. So uh, my last, last work was in Nigeria which was Niger Awareness Truck, and I enjoyed it very much. It became also best practice project. So in uh, Humboldt and other uh, university, I uh, work a lot with gender studies aspect, and um, I um, also um, have this um, uh, seminar on uh, black uh, literature. So uh, what is black literature anyway, and who is dealing with black literature, and what is the topic in black literatures? And we have the Mayayim. Mayayim was like an uh, um, Afro-German um, uh, uh, poet. Um, she um, has the street um, in uh, Mayayim Ufa, renamed. And uh, this was uh, like a great work, and one of my... Uh, big work in Berlin when I just entered Berlin in 2002. So this work was 2004 with the Haus der Kultur und der Welt. And, um, and this was like really, really um, um, mind shifting because the UNESCO really stepped in and said, oh, this is something that is helping to um, uh, encourage uh, empowerment on the uh, slavery and uh, to overcome it. And um, so from there, we um, uh, focus on work like um, um, I uh, created a lot of um, entity that are NGOs like the U UN. Uh, 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 and the, the sixth region means like mm, in Europe, uh, it's basically oh, all over the world. It's now accepted that um, the black diaspora is all over and that their being and their settings is accepted as the sixth region, like the, a continent of their own. Uh, which is not um, um, with a space. It's just like um, a vi virtual uh, reality of acknowledgement, which is like a, a big step already. So that's where I uh, step in with this uh, geographical uh, knowledge of asking for the space to um, um, elaborate on um, explicitly uh, what is the political uh, background, what is the cultural background, and what is the um, media background, which is like uh, a, a big take we have on this, also to archive all this knowledge that is not like we are starting from the beginning all over again. This um, um, narratives has been there, and um, we um, archive them a lot. And um, we uh, do that by um, 
the first archiving system that we really brought out was like going through um, uh, Germany and um, picking out who is the expert. And this is online on the uh, uh, Bundeszentrale für Politische Bildung, which is the uh, black diaspora topic. And um, so we have a book also on that, uh, which is the black book showcasing all these experts that were like the uh, frontliners um, uh, to, to write about um, black knowledge and black experience. And um, so we are really proud of this kind of, um, um, you know, movement that we kind of, you know, took um, advantage of uh, or being privileged to, to, to go for and do. And so um, that's uh, how we uh, do the project. So I think we can just also uh, go to a video that could show um, uh, the Black uh, Berlin Biennale in uh, Berlin. And uh, just uh, I always say something at the beginning and after one minute, um, uh, we can also fast forward and I can also say something. This is also like a collaboration of uh, one of the uh, people that were, you know, uh, cooler is uh, uh, Scott House uh, formerly that a student took over and um, it's over 30 years now that uh, this house is existing. And... Um, and that's just the house, and this is the two artists, um, uh, Chidi Kubiri uh, from Cologne, and uh, Madisa with the uh, corpus. And uh, this is like merging the artists, and the next step of this kind of work uh, we are doing is to also start um, um, having a, a lot of merchandising on this um, uh, area. So this is like uh, showing this Afrofuturistic level of how we approach things, because this artifact uh, that you can see at the side are uh, still uh, not um, back to uh, where they belong. And we do a lot of collage uh, showcase in the Urijalo case and also the mask uh, uh, of this uh, Nigerian culturality and this is like the, the, the life uh, is uh, just uh, the lockdown was on but uh, I think it was like the first lockdown that was um, showcased there and um, it's beautiful to also collaborate with his TV, which is like uh, something that we did the first time and then afterwards we did it the second time in their installation, just like this one. So it was really interesting. And there's a video to that one too. Maybe you just check it online for yourself. And this is uh, Michael Cooper's at the Beauty. And we do everything together on that line. And we basically said this is Anton Willem Amos the whole uh, post uh, to uh, kind of uh, analyze the uh, street renaming that is happening in Berlin um, where it, it happened the first time with the uh, Black uh, Literature Prize that we did in Haus der Kultur und der Welt. So that le led to the renaming of the, uh, uh, of the street um, to and now we have the renaming of the M Street to uh, uh, Anton Willem Amo. So we are very uh, happy and, and uh, proud of that. And the other renaming is the Lucy Lamek. And Lucy Lamek is uh, in the Ermannstraße, which was the former Wismannstraße. And it's also renamed now, and we are very proud of that one too. And um, the exhibition I told you about early was uh, named Mitte wird gehalten, which was covering the Council of uh, Tiergarten. So that one is not in this video, but you can also uh, basically uh, check it out online. And um, yes, so we are basically like um, aiming for uh, uh, an atmosphere of something like um, what Christo did. So, of course, our dream would now be to cover the Humboldt Forum. 
<laughs> so we are hoping to have this opportunity. We've done enough on the Humboldt Forum, and uh, I think it would be really fair to, to also uh, cover the Humboldt Forum and, and, and say, okay, this is the way we would have uh, liked the facet to look like. So it's um, then covered with the com connecting the Black Berlin Biennale always goes with the Black Womanhood Reloaded. And Black Womanhood Reloaded was uh, inviting a lot of um, artists and, um, and this is uh, uh, one of uh, the uh, artists uh, that was coming with um, the publication on Afrofuturism. And uh, we had also then the exhibition on that. So black women would always present other uh, women, like we have reading a session and we have like um, open uh, collaboration uh, session with um, different kind of artists and um, we never know which kind of artists we're going to meet up with, so we are always open to uh, collaborate with them and uh, and see what comes out of it. So uh, from Nigeria, we um, were able to uh, give um, 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 you know some designers, clothes designers, the chance to have new sewing machines, like hundred of them, and now we have also a lot of collaboration on uh, uh, on design as you can see uh, what I'm wearing is also part from uh, that uh, collection and this is like the second uh, um, house that you see there this is the house uh, that is just built in Berlin Global Village and we opened it uh, two days ago with uh, all this um, um, uh, Bürgermeister from Neukölln, Integrationsbeauftragte, and all these uh, people were uh, really, um, you know, happy to have something uh, like that in, in Neukölln, which is like a place for NGO, diaspora, uh, uh, entity, people uh, of color. And uh, I am uh, the speaker of this uh, diversity uh, uh, rat cancel what so it's really interesting how this project uh, move around so thank you for having me thank you so um. much Alton, also <laughs> for this um, kind of introduction into into your makings no? of you and also of uh, Michael Kupas Adebisi uh, well a lot of topics obviously that, uh, to address too um, and maybe I would like to start with one because I was curious about this you mentioned that in your work in whether as a publisher author or curator you kind of not only focus on the political knowledge and the cultural knowledge and the social economic but also the geographical so we're coming to that notion of the spatial turn no this moment in let's say cultural studies and uh, social studies where um, i mean very bluntly put people realized well space is a, a factor to to look at no and you said like who is talking and from where are they talking from um, which now made me think of this idea, this something that I'm trying to explore always with my um, kind of dialogue partners here of site-specific knowledges. And that's something that um, I've been looking at, um, inspired actually by Edouard Glissant, who kind of has this idea of that knowledge doesn't just happen or the way we are thinking or philosophy, but in his text in the creolization context, but there's a site-specificity to it. Now, um, that said, I, I wonder in how how uh, the different sides of uh, your life have influenced the way you are thinking. So you grew up in Lagos, then you moved here, and you mentioned that in 2002 you moved to Berlin. So it's 20 years almost here in the city. And, and, and asking the question that you are asking, who is, like, who is talking and from where is he or she talking, what, and how far did these different sides Impact, me. impact you and your thinking and your, your, your way of approaching the world? Yes, I think it impacted me a lot because I grew up like um, in, a, uh, in the notion of being like from this big family of Adebisi, which is like um, um, a, a royal uh, uh, descendant um, um, uh, telling you the history of yourself. Mm. So when I came to Germany, um, I kind of, you know, was uh, uh, 12 years old. And then this, um, what was happening on the playground was like uh, people calling me like the N word. And then that was the time where this film Roots was uh, on television. So everybody was like, 
watching this and every Monday you go back to school and you were like, I don't understand. Because if you're coming from Nigeria, you, 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 you just don't know that there is this perspective of your skin being so different that people will be calling you out. And especially uh, coming from a kind of privileged uh, situation, I was like, what is going on? So it was really interesting for me to uh, grow into that and, 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 and ask why am I called this? And I remember the first uh, girl told me, it's coming from the slavery. And I'm like, but, but I'm here and why are you calling me something from the slavery? Are you nuts? What have you got to do with the slavery? You are just also a small person that doesn't know anything about it. And then she said, like, that's what they call you. Like you in, in, in like, you, all of you, you know, like, and I'm like, all of us, woo. And this was so interesting in this um, uh, knowledge of when I was then uh, working in the uh, university with uh, Michelle Wright, Professor Michelle Wright, where she wrote this book of um, becoming black, that this is something you really become. Like uh, people telling me like, oh, can you, can't you see he's coming from Turkey uh, or he's coming from Italy? And I, I couldn't see that, you know. And I'm like, okay, I can't see it. Uh, how do I see it? Yes, you can see it. They look like this. They look like that. And then um, uh, later on in this, uh, that's why I mentioned also spirituality is part of what I also always look at. Um, then this was this uh, movement of uh, uh, the, the, what happened in the uh, uh, time of uh, uh, national socialist time in Germany. Uh, where um, the Jewish people have been called out uh, upon their looks. And, and then I'm like, yes, okay, then they look like that. What does that mean? And then uh, it's like, yes, but it's their religion. I say, yeah, so what does that mean? It was like really hard for me to get into this, this notion of this counting out and, and putting a stamp on a privileged uh, 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 situation and who is privileged and what is bad, what is good. And um, so it took a while. So it, it really gives me this, this way of, of opening up because I had like this beautiful um, um, uh, way of when I came to Germany, where I was in this school where you learn German. It, it was a private school, but... You, you meet a lot of people from all over. And it was so beautiful. And I thought Germany was like that, you know, like people would just tell their story about their country, bring the food about their country. It's when I went out of this school, it started becoming like really odd uh, because I, I'm happy I, I had this smooth, beautiful... Transition. <laughs> yes, because I, I mean, otherwise it would be so odd. So you meet the people and their culture and their beauty. And um, so you also transform together learning this language. And uh, so this is so much very important to me to, to analyze the culturality because from the form of the culturality, when I was like uh, with this uh, Humboldt Forum topic, we went there to ask uh, 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 why are these artifacts not uh, getting back to uh, the places where they belong to? And the answer was, yeah, they would not be taken care of properly if we would have given it to them, which was like really odd to say that uh, uh, the people that have their own um, um, things would not take care of it properly. So I really, really uh, um, need to... Um, acclimatize with space and geography. And all these privileges um, um, would also show how you are placed in the society, how your language is placed, how your, your character is placed, just um, because you have a, a certain kind of um, you know, passport or you don't have a certain kind of passport. And especially at this time uh, of corona, how... Um, how ugly your life can uh, be if you don't have the right passport uh, uh, because um, 
all these uh, minist uh, uh, ministries are not even open properly at this time to get your uh, uh, things done. And I do like trans, uh, trans, tra translating and all matching for the, for the uh, ministerium. And it's really hard to, to hear the story of the people and what they are going through. Like people are sitting there and they have like a bullet in their system that cannot be pulled out because their paper is not ready. You can imagine. So this bullet is just in this body and moving around. And um, because the paper of this person is not ready, th this person cannot have uh, the operation because they have to um, find out, is this operation going to be here? Or maybe send the people back to uh, where they're coming from. Mostly they come from. Uh, uh, Italy. So that's also part of the project I did in Nigeria to elaborate on um, how difficult it is for them to travel abroad if they don't have the right expertise and if they don't take the, 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 the secure route they might just die on the road or will become slave in uh, which I don't want to say this places maybe you know they will feel ugly <laughs> about their nation. But that's basically what is happening. So um, that's why our, um, we were so proud to do digitalization with uh, uh, the young um, uh, people in Nigeria. And um, uh, because of the corona, we have to switch the program at the end. And it was so beautiful. We could um, you know, set, give them all the sewing machine, especially people that have you know, gone through their... Uh, um, you know, they are already finished uh, designers and now um, we go to the next step and see what we can do with them. And especially also like this material, this natural material of the batik stuff, you know. I, I don't know the English word, like the gerbung, you know, all this system of um, retaining the old system is very much in my um, aspect of work because um, I think if we don't uh, think take the system of waste in our knowledge and to also reconsider what the meaning of waste is because waste is something we have to reuse and not just think of as something that we want to throw away. Maybe I take the key term reuse to uh, lead new now to you, Benedict. Thank you, first of all, Antun. And I mean, we started with a site-specific knowledge and we covered a lot of ground literally now in your answer to that question. And I would like to come back to that and maybe also the connection to you is um, that in kind of realizing these disparities and realizing this kind of systematical racisms that exist, you nonetheless found art or artistic techniques as somehow a means of a discursive transformation. Yeah, or interaction. Or the interaction. Um, and that's maybe um, a good leading point to you now, Benedict. Um, thank you for being here, Benedict Stoll. You're um, founder of, um, or the co-founder of the collective um, Guerilla Architects. Um, I came across your work at an exhibition at the NBK, um, Die Sprache der Spekulation, The Language of Speculation, was a little video clip. And I thought it was brilliant. And um, I'm really happy that you're here and that we can have a chance now to meet. Um, so ever since I've been following your work. So um, Guerrilla Architects is a multidisciplinary collective based here in Berlin um, that's focused on um, spatial interventions and socio-political practices. And um, you often work within given structures. So no, I just said I take the term reuse and apply it now. And uh, you are trying to kind of by rather small interventions kind of change or reuse the, the existing narrative of, of these spaces, simply put. Um, yeah, that said, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here and uh, the, the screen is now yours. Thank you very much. Can I have the pointer, please? Yeah, the clipper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to yeah, also briefly try to explain what we do. Uh, by a collection of a couple of words. Uh, I think I'm going to focus on the latter one. So, yeah, we work flexible, multidisciplinary, that I would say context-specific, site-specific in some ways, and, and maybe especially performative, political, and playful 
And these are the aspects that I'm trying to focus now also in my presentations. And if one want, would like to read about our work in a more uh, elaborate way, you could call it spatial, critical spatial practice, a term by Jane Randall, who defines maybe a, our practice or practices between art and architecture, between theory and practice. Spatial agency is a term that was also coined by one of your co-curators, uh, who is, some, at least for us, is something that also um, gives our practice a political dimension. And performative urbanism is something that just came up quite lately in 2015, where it's mostly about the performative qualities of architecture, so the issues of perform performativity from theatre studies and how far that informs the architect's positionality in that space where he or she intervenes and how that affects the work in a way. So yeah, this is something when is, if you're interested in what we do or generally in the kind of work that you do, that is something you definitely can read. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to focus on the performative, playful and political in a way uh, on this talk. So I'm, this are just a few examples of projects that we did. The, one of the topics was about uh, waste at festivals, basically the reuse of these materials. Uh, one the bottom was about the future of work, uh, where we did an installation and performance in Hildesheim. The, on the left was uh, the demonstration for animal rights. So uh, this is just a brief collection of a project that we did in the past few years, which someone just wanted to showcase that we are still always looking for this kind of performative and playful character of issues that we mainly see in urbanism or architecture. That is our background. We are all architects, but I think we consider ourselves more an artistic practice than an architectural practice. So I'm going to show you now uh, where this all comes from, in a way, or why we see ourselves as guerrilla architects, or where this name also comes from. And we actually met in Berlin 2012, and during our studies at the UDK in Berlin, we were asked to squat a house in London, uh, so we went to London to Squatter House and then basically defined a project around that issue, which was about homelessness and uh, real estate speculation in, in general terms. And we basically found this hidden borough, a borough made of these vacancies in that city and basically went out to show them to the public. So we didn't went out, did these kind of little actions um, and defining this borough, borough and making it visible to the neighborhood. These are just a few examples of these actions. And we also did our very first performances in public space, which are until now, I think, a very important artistic way for us to artic articulate our, the issues that we want to address. So yeah, this is, these are the firm first performance. We did that project with the um, performance artist Pablo Wendel, who was at that point a very important influence for us. And also define or completely challenge our way of how we saw our practice as architects or now new artists. Um, yeah, this is then also an image of the place that we squatted. I think this whole experience changed us personally and professionally quite a lot and also led uh, to a completely new understanding of our practice. And I'm going to show you now the latest project, which is then uh, a kind of continuation of that project of which is now 10 years old. Uh, I guess, yeah, this is maybe also important, the image of us at that time, 2012, where we are still 10 st architecture students. Uh, we had to go to court, actually, at that time, because the owner wanted to get rid of us. We, yeah, had to dress up and actually also won the case, and therefore we needed the name, so we said, why, just let's all, let's call us a career architects. We, we, will, we were presented ourselves as a Berlin architecture office, that were not just there to squat a house, but basically were there to occupy uh, a space, but also to wanted to give it back to the neighbor, to the community, and address the issues around homelessness and uh, real estate speculation. But that was more or less the founding moment of our collective. And yeah, it's uh, good memories at that time, definitely. Um, now I'm going to switch to the latest project, which is um, yeah the for us, the very first uh, professionally produced performance the theater piece that we did in collaboration with the director Alicia Agustin and Radial System, and has a lot to do with this, the beginnings because it also deals with real estate speculation, but this time in Berlin, and also with performances in public space, which are a very yeah, important perform, uh, yeah, format for us. Um, 
The whole project started with a research on this bridge, which bridge is actually doesn't exist anymore, is the, the so-called Bromibrücke, which were destroyed during the Second World War. It looks like this nowadays. So it's basically just this, this, this former pillar of in between the, the, the River Spree, which is in con which lies in context of one like a, a, an area of very high sp uh, land speculation. With this tower is basically the tower with uh, the most um, most uh, expensive apartments in Berlin right now. So an area around Media Spree which has been changing a lot uh, during the last couple of years, but it's still a kind of a scar of that former time. And for us, was we were really curious what this um, ruin is and what it stands for and how the area around it um, changed so much at that time. And then we uh, actually started to map the ownership structures, for example, and talked a lot to neighbors. So we spent a lot of time actually knocking at people's doors and engaging with the community to actually yeah, uh, find out or uh, found out some from unheard voices or stories about that neighborhood that changed so tremendously at that time because the northern part is now completely di uh, different as a complete office neighborhood, uh, completely privately owned, and the southern part is a typical Kreuzberg uh, neighborhood. So there was a lot of tensions around, again, real estate speculation uh, that were really interesting and especially also interesting to tackle these issues now in Berlin because they are now all over the place. Um, and at that time where we did that, I think, two or three years ago now, uh, it was uh, an arising topic that we wanted to address in the city where we all lived. Um, yeah, I'm going to show a brief video now, which is the first installation and in performance. And uh, due to the pandemic, we couldn't really do performances in public space, but we had to start with this installation at Radia System, which had to deal with the our own responsibility as architects or artists on areas like that that we uh, research on. Ohne Stress, ohne Druck. Wir nehmen uns Zeit für Sie. Willkommen zu Hause. Keine Scheu vor Eigentum. Wir möchten Ihnen die Berührungsängste nehmen. Eigentum bedeutet Flexibilität. Eigentum Moment in der Architektur ist hier nicht ganz viel Druck, weil es gibt diese großen Investoren, die kommen aus Amerika oder Russland oder äh, so und die kaufen dann ganze Areale. Und natürlich ist das für die Architekten ist das jetzt eine große Chance, um viel Geld zu machen, aber die Menschen... was because we deal, dealt with our own guilt in defining our building environment. Coming from an architectural process to be aware that our design profession is really uh, yeah, responsible how we also shape our building environment, our living environment. And this is basically the, the core uh, message from this piece. And this was also a collection of our own, uh, uh, how do you say, like uh, confessions that we made during that process. But it was interesting for us as a starting point. You can, we, can, we can pause it now. Uh, and go on. Um, yeah, important po uh, starting point for us to also address our own responsibility in that uh, that po project. Um, um, and yeah, but actually the whole point was to um, not just make a complete research about uh, 
the issues that we intended, but what create situations like this. This is actually a shot from, from the movie that we did to yeah, use performances in public space to create an audience in the neighbor that is not really aware of being an audience. That is really key to us in a way from the very beginning with these blue uh, shirts that we had in London to now to see and how far this practice, this uh, practice of performance as he did, as it can be, can be used in, in the street, in the public to define, uh, you know, to open up new space of discussion in a way and then create something like this. This is really, really funny that guys had a lot of barbecues at that bridge where, uh, at that plant where we shot a lot of from the movie and uh, uh, yeah, engage with us quite a lot and uh, was interesting to create these moments a lot and then also engage, uh, incorporate them in the, in the, in the, in the movie. And yeah, that be said, we actually could make that at the second act, uh, second part of this project, where we were actually able to do these performances in public space uh, under the, 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 the restrictions, but it was still possible. And yeah, I think this is really key in how far we can uh, also always engage an audience to issues that we raise and not just uh, know, showcase them in, a, in an, an exhibition or... Uh, a studio space in a way and uh, yeah I think that is definitely uh, a key part to the way we see our practice and I think we can also see a very short video of that I'm not going to show the whole thing but to give you an idea how these performances in public space look like uh, this is a part of the, the second act and in this part we mainly concentrated on finance and how far finance shapes the, uh, uh, the, 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 the housing market in Berlin. And uh, yeah, that was really a difficult, a difficult task for us to tackle this is because we were, even as trained architect, not really able to grasp this issue within the production of six weeks, dealing with like, uh, yeah, the whole finance market behind this and the control of the building sector and in general. And we found, for example, uh, in a house where uh, one particular American investor was, was like actually um, wounding a place due to uh, speculation of land and other issues. We, we tried to kind of tackle these really general abstract issues and again um, bring them into the discussion with uh, the neighbor in a way, but also then with this uh, theater uh, audience. And did you can hear the sound? Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, just one minute. Yeah. Yeah, for example, these guys now are now asking the, the members of the community that what, what is the milieu should be something really simple question, but also asking how far our, our theatre audience is aware of simple uh, laws around the uh, built environment and on the renting market. I think yeah, we can stop now again and continue with the presentation. Um, yeah, and um, I'm, there was also a third format that we did, again, a digital format, um, which was then um, focusing on the, the, the issues around the digitalization in, of the, the, the housing market. And um, again, there is a video that you can show on our, on our Vimeo page, but I'm not going to go into it. But, but, and, and again, uh, it's uh, just a way for us to actually tackle research is that we are, again, by ourselves, not able to explain properly without any, uh, engaging a lot of time and uh, talking to a lot of people, but then trying to find the right format, artistic formats to, 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 to bring them back into discussion with people who actually don't have the time to do that, what we do in a way. Um, now I'm just show, going to show the last, or the recent, one of the recent projects, which is in a way us coming from architecture, but actually working more into an artistic practice on like issues around housing or uh, uh, land speculation. 
now to the Baupalast. Baupalast is a project that is part of the recent, uh, well, biggest, I think, urban development pilot project Rauthausblock in uh, central Kreuzberg in Berlin, where uh, an area of five acres is being completely reshaped. A lot of housing is about to be built. And we are going to be a, a tiny, tiny part of that uh, development where we build a, a wooden structure that is will be part of that construction site for, for three to five years. And we will try to co-co-co-co-design um, co, 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 co that little space and, and try to be part of that process. And, and yeah, again, um, raising questions about uncommons in housing, uh, but this time as part of an urban development process. And then also asking ourselves again, how far we as architects and artists can be part of that such an, a development actually in that uh, place where we live. Uh, so this is, you can check out, I'm not allowed to show you more pictures because it's actually in the process and nobody knows how it's actually going to be look like. So that is the, the rough uh, uh, intention to show you that some, that is happening actually since more than two years and we are about to build it, I guess, by the end of this year. But yeah, it's uh, the brief uh, um, intervention and yeah, this is the Web of Earth and that is now the last recent picture of us. We are now six uh, members, all coming from architecture, but yeah, constantly reshaping our own practice in, in, with our artistic uh, projects. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Benedict. So, yeah, guys, just looking at the time, we basically only have 15 minutes left for our conversation um, before time is up. So um, I'd like to look into a few aspects with you, too, and uh, ask uh, questions to both of you. Um, one being um, you are both um, have a foot in the academic research, um, as well as in the um, kind of artistic production or curatorial production. Um, you have decided as an architect to actually more work in the world of performance rather or art than, than building building. Um, now this is um, one uh, um, question, a quick answer. How do you kind of maneuver that in between, between academia and art? Because they are, we've discussed it with many of our um, conversation partners, they are different worlds still. No? Sometimes they overlap, sometimes they don't at all. Um, so that's the, my own curiosity, how, how, do you, how you're able to um, bring them together or how can they kind of foster each other. And then um, build upon this question, the second one is, why did you choose for the arts as your means of communication? So why did you pick uh, artistic practices or artistic techniques in order to do your critical interventions, in order to raise awareness? Like, what does art offer in that context that other forms of uh, um, translation maybe don't? So, um, yeah, academia and art, and that kind of dichotomy, that dialectic that's there, and the, these are kind of opposing parts, and maybe why, why the arts for you? Maybe I start with you, Adetun. Yes, I think if you if you want to have a kind of speculative format, and you also uh, develop uh, what you call a movement, you have to merge um, dimensions, and uh, you have to merge um, a, a space. You have to merge uh, a past, present, and future, and uh, you want to uh, um, uh, be free in your expression. So you need uh, this academia part to say, okay, I am coming from something that you know, so it's grounded maybe like in Afrofuturism, and um, so the Afrofuturism is just like the wording that will help you um, speculate backwards in the future space formats and to um, articulate and showcase um, structures that are not um, the typical urban look that uh, uh, you are used to. So you want to do that, you, 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 you just step into this art form immediately. You want to uh, kind of uh, show it in a format like, um, it's not like straightforward, uh, that you are not talking about the politics per se. This is not uh, the only thing you want to, to uh, point out if you want to uh, do the work I'm doing. You don't want to just talk about the culture per se. It's just boring enough just to talk about the culture, but to uh, put it together with the politics and put it together with the uh, media that are addressing this kind of politics and culture in what time. It showcases uh, that 
there are a lot of uh, different uh, shapes behind it already and privileges and speculations. And then you want to see um, how uh, you can um, say it's a movement or it's not a movement. So it's kind of sh gives you a lot of uh, uh, possibility because you want to uh, uh, have uh, this uh, connection with um, uh, networks, which is something that uh, really goes a long way with the way uh, I do uh, uh, my curation. I need uh, a lot of networking, I need a, no a lot of collaboration, and uh, it shows like this overwhelming uh, uh, pool that you can just um, um, put yourself into without always been academia in every format of it but you can you will need the academia part to be taken serious though um i think art is just the form of um you know relating to a lot of trauma uh is uh, uh and then um uh, choosing to empower yourself uh, out of the trauma and uh and then uh, you will elaborate with your art um, what basically uh, runs into uh, all the dimension of what crosses your way and uh, what you gain as collaboration. And um, yes, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Aditun. How about you, Benedict? I think you mentioned time in your elaboration. The way that is maybe key because, like, our practice are normally project-based, so that, that the project has an end, and it's a process that develops at that time. But then it has an, there's something happening, and then it's finished, and then you might there might something out that out of that that develops uh, or continues uh, to be developed. But it's actually something that is kind of really has a fairly fixed uh, term in a way, and it's then yeah, nothing else happening and academia or research is something that is much more time consuming also the process of pu publishing things is uh, very time consuming and so that actually I think academia is always a kind of a step behind a project which is developing much faster and quicker and ending before the research has, has actually begun so that's kind of uh, the, the issue of kind of overlapping research and project happening on site with people in a way so it's I guess the biggest issue between the two, but it's offer, offers a space for reflection after you have done something, which is then, and you often don't have the time for that, but it's still important. And for us, like, why we do art, I think especially performance have offered us uh, an, a bodily experience of a site. And normally as architects, we work with materials and space, that is that's what we know, but that introducing the body in our work in a way is, has introduced a new dimension of that space because we have to question ourselves in that space there we, where we intervene, where we do artistic projects, where we engage with someone just by being there, speaking to people, but also then the end by doing an art project. So that's, I think, important as a very personal experience, first of all, and then this really personal engagement to the step that you create an artistic uh, intervention, a translation that then creates a different dialogue and can raise questions that are not really, uh, can, be, can be discussed without these kind of means of uh, uh, exaggeration uh, in many ways. I guess that's why I think it's really interesting to just use these techniques and for your own sake, but then also to the, find the, the method to, to actually enable that for others as well in a way. So. And what um, I said in the very beginning, I think, um, what um, combines the work of the two of you that the kind of you question these preconceived notions of something uh, of, uh, like a spatial issue or architectural issue or uh, decolonial uh, uh, perspective um, and I think that's something that we are trying in this exhibition too in Living the City that we kind of try to question let's say the dominant narratives that exist about the European city and just show it more as a I mean it's a horrible term but multi-perspectival kind of uh, um, phenomena no? there's, there's many more voices to be heard and maybe this is also something that kind of I can find in the, in the works of the two of you is that you you um, expand upon a notion of a let's say a, like a history of something a history with a capital H so to speak and rather provide like histories not like minuscular and and plural or you know like uh, micro histories that then create a much more diversified image uh, uh, of something I'm, am I right about this perception of both of your works yeah yeah, yeah. 
I think in the in the history or history of of uh, marginalized cultures, um, especially from uh, the perspective of of the European uh, view, you will have to see that um, what I said at the beginning. It's like talking about and not um, um, talking from this uh, uh, history and history. And um, so this is like uh, what uh, uh, you want to kind of uh, question and, and break up and break into and break out of and, um, and analyze and bring out basically uh, with uh, this um, um, collaboration and uh, communication and uh, working with uh, other uh, uh, format and other material and um, artists, you want to just enjoy the new aspect that comes out of it, like uh, the new aesthetic that uh, uh, was questioned before because uh, we uh, differentiate in um, what is the culture and whose culture is the high culture and what is... Um, the aesthetic of how uh, art should look like, and uh, you know, it's it's it goes a long way to kind of break it up and say, well, this is just a view, and um, there are um, other views and uh, speculations that could be very interesting. Let's look into that and let's uh, bring it into format, and let's also reshape this uh, uh, format. So you want to break that up and say, okay, why um, are this marginalized view not being uh, taken into consideration? Why are we always like talking about them and not bringing them into the system of uh, what we want to look at or work with or, uh, or change or see to? And we are seeing a lot of, um, um, you know, that we need to do that because even um, comparing all this work like the squads that this urbanization, how it's going on and that um, also the people in Europe are also um, struggling with uh, the possibilities they have here and that uh, we are also longing in Europe to, to have, um, you know, to have our history bring back and uh, talk about the intersectionality. That's why as the her story in between, because uh, coming from gender studies, we also question the notion of language and the notion of uh, masculinity in language a lot. And uh, that's why it's also interesting to say, why is it not her story? And uh, that small, small stories Bringing it in the format of archive will, of course, uh, at the end, bring the big story together. Because when we started, uh, it was like just um, uh, we, were, we were just happy to collaborate with maybe Goethe Institute or uh, Bunda Centrale. And then at the end, we questioned also this format. And then we kind of um, uh, felt it, it might be interesting to look at what we really want to uh, go for and aim for. And uh, at the end, it's just about uh, leaving back uh, the, the story that can be called maybe the, the Afropian movement, Afro-Deutsche Bewegung, and then the people of African descent. These were like um, titles that were not there before when we started out. And um, we didn't we, we, we questioned the, the, this uh, word that is the N word, and we're like happy that this uh, street is renamed, this M Strasse, because these are like the history that was being put on the head of the people. And uh, we needed to create our own culture, and to create your own culture, you have to step into at least these three timelines, and then. Um, a lot of the uh, story needs to also have a space, and that's why we, um, yeah, we kind of um, do a lot of covering uh, spaces with our images. And uh, yes, thank you, um, thank you both so much for for joining me here in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this, as I said, is uh, the last uh, of the double feature lecture series. Um, and we hope that um, with these dis uh, discussions, 
we were able to kind of raise some questions and kind of raise the curiosity maybe of also the, the listeners or the viewers. Um, we're not providing any solutions, obviously, uh, and we're not providing any answers, but but nonetheless, I think the discourse is what's what's so important, and, um, and both of you are um, key players in that. So I'm grateful and thankful and uh, honored that you are here. Um, to you, the audience, it's been a pleasure. It's been a long ride. Uh, I did not count, but it's been many, many guests with us. Um, and um, I wish you all the best. Stay safe.